Hello and welcome to the Stateside Soccer Show. My name is Jordan, and with me, as always, here is Logan. How are you today, Logan? Oh, I was <laughs> I was actually thinking about what I was going to say earlier today. I had something I was going to say, but now Jordan and I, and I no longer have any idea as to what I was going to say to that question. <laughs> That's the hardest question you've ever asked. Um, no. <laughs> Was it was something like, April Fool's really related, or were you? Oh, yes, it was. Yes, it was. It was something, but I can't remember what it was. Oh, yeah. Uh, none of this today, Jordan, um, is uh, if if you have a problem with what we say, um, then then it, then it's a joke. If you if you if you have a problem with what we're what we're doing here, um, it's a joke. If not, if you like the show, then it's a completely serious podcast, hundred percent accurate. So, yeah, we can only do that on uh, today's show. Which is recorded on April Fool's. I was just thinking also, like, I should have introduced myself as Logan and then been like, <laughs> with me as always is Jordan. Just really throw it off. Um, I actually don't like April Fool's that much. Uh, I don't like it. It is very tiring on for the internet. I think it was more fun <laughs> pre-internet. So, I, tangent. Um, my bright idea of a April Fool's back in uh middle school was me and my friend had this uh, crush on the same girl emma watson the celebrity not like a girl that went to our school and my april fool's idea was to tell him that i no longer had a crush on her and then i was like just kidding april fools is lame but that's my idea of like an april fool's day. No. nobody's really hurt by that right some of these now it's just like um i don't know what, what people should maybe i'm just a killjoy but like when seeing like fake signings and uh fake uh i mean i saw so many uh that were like entertainment related today for like dc comics and just being like james gunn is out and blah 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 and you're like yeah like that's an obvious joke like they're not firing i don't know it just seemed like they're all very easily figured out like none of them really fool me and then when they do fool me, it's because they were just like they had multiple people in on it, and they were like, you know, uh, everybody say, no, this is serious, even though it's April Fools, this is serious. And then, and then they're like, ah, just kidding, it is April Fools. And you're like, well, what's the point of that? What's the point of that? <laughs> it's the worst. I, I love that people are tweeting at big brands like, stop messing with us, please leave us alone today. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it, it. There was only one I fell for today. Um, and I forget what it was, but it was... Was it the Olive it in looks... York one? Huh? Was it the Olive in York oh, one? Oh, yes, that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like brands like that, I mean, it's fun. But then it's also like... I imagine that you, you'd make some people upset about it. Like, I don't know. I just feel like it's a, it's tough waters to, to kind of navigate. And we don't try it. Um, no. That's kind of like our... Look, listen to us here. Uh, I think going forward, we can agree we will not be doing April Fools. So if you see something that we're putting out there on April Fools, it's legit. If we ever start covering anything like where we get sources, we're not making up stuff on April Fools. Right. So you will be able to believe us uh, no matter what day it is. Okay. Um, my notes just crashed. Okay, hold on. There we go. All right. So today we have, uh, we're talking match day seven. But before we get into that, we got some Kevin uh, Sullivan stuff that we wanted to talk about. This broke a little, a few days ago. Definitely before April Fool's. It's on Thursday, like Wednesday, Thursday, it seems. I was going to say, I lost track because I was off on Friday. So Thursday felt like Friday. And then Saturday felt like sunday because i was off on friday like i'm all over the place right now so uh it happened sometime but uh i think tom bogert was the one that reported this um city manchester city are going to pay 2.1 million dollars up front for Kevin sullivan who has not yet signed a professional contract if all the bonuses are triggered, the fee could move closer to $5 million, with Philadelphia retaining a hefty sell-on clause. Now, it sounds like he will stay with um, MLS until he is 18. 
um, which is the earliest date that a Premier League club can sign an overseas talent. I still wonder how they get away with this then if they've already made the deal, but they can't sign them until 18. Seems like this is something City will be investigated about and have their title stripped. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's it's just odd. Uh, fine. As a Philly fan, I'll, I'll take it, I guess, because we're going to get money from this. And he is going to get sold on from City. I doubt he's going to play for City like fully. So Philadelphia will get a cut out of that at some point. Um, so January 2028 is the earliest window that he would be going to City. Um, but we're going to have him for a few years over here in MLS as he's actually going to sign with the union. And I want to say ha, 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 ha to all the people that are like, he's going to skip MLS entirely, man. One, he's in our academy. Two, he's going to be playing over here until he turns 18. So he's not going to be skipping MLS. He could have skipped MLS. He could have went over... At 16 to another uh, place, I think, that wasn't Premier League, the way that Geo and the way that um, uh, Pulisic did. I believe he has another passport, so that is a path opened up. But look, his brother plays for the Union, was the best player in the match for the Union this weekend. He probably does have some ties to this club where he's like, hey, I, maybe he wants to actually play for this club for a few years. So I'm excited about that. It's a pretty big deal for the Philadelphia Union, and a pretty big deal for MLS overall. Yeah, I, I heard a lot of talk about this and discussion about Kevin Sullivan and, and the gateway that it opens up between the United States and then some of the biggest clubs in Europe. When you've got Manchester City that's scouting your union, Jordan, uh, that's pretty exciting because I think you know MLS, that's one thing that we've always been hesitant about when some of these uh, academies seem to be rated, like uh, Dallas, for instance. We always talked about the Dallas players that have moved on. But I think if this becomes more of a consistent thing, then you're starting to look at it more of the U.S. is really good at developing younger talent. Younger talent is going to stick around. And then if Kevin Sullivan, for instance, sticks around and he plays MLS, and some of these youth players like Quinn Sullivan, um, like Jack McGlynn, like, you know, players like that, like if they stick around and play, in MLS, it's going to help the youth academies. It's going to help um, MLS Next Pro. I think that's the idea of it is to develop youth uh, talent so that way they can play on MLS teams and the senior sides. And you're starting to see a lot more of that, Jordan, and you're starting to see a lot more of MLS teams having success, you know, kind of um, creating this talent level um, where they can, you know, filter guys in and out and we're creating first team products. Like you look at Orlando, who's had success in doing the same thing where they're having these talents come through and they're not just leaving immediately. Yes, they've got their eyes on Europe, but I think that's going to remain a, a consistent thing until MLS says otherwise. So I, I really do. I, I'm interested to see what Kevin does um, going forward. He won't play for Manchester City. They do this all the time. They shop in Brazil and South America quite a bit. And then we never see those players as a City fan. You never see them get up to those uh, teams. Sometimes you'll see them on their uh, cast out teams to like Italy but that too doesn't usually go through. Like they usually end up like on a on a lower side Premier League team. Um, is it tends to be what City does? It's kind of pawn them off onto the lower teams. So um, the one that comes to instance for instance, where that comes to mind um, is Ihanacho, uh, who ended up at Leicester City. So uh, when they signed him at a young age, so I think that's what Cavan's going to do. He is really good, but then you know, there's also Jordan a lot of talk about you know, the union and their ability to develop not only youth players, but siblings that are these power duos, the dynamic uh, power. Because Quinn Sullivan is, people overlook him because I think the brother's there. And, it, you know, you can't just pass by Quinn Sullivan and go, oh, man, that, you know, it skipped it. Like, Quinn Sullivan's a really talented player that I could see end up playing in uh, a bigger European side. So um, I don't know what the union are doing as far as scouting. I think they're just raiding homes, childhood homes of people um, saying, are you guys good at soccer? Your brother probably is too. <laughs> they go in like the Jedi. They're like, we heard about a uh, force sensitive yeah. kid here, <laughs> soccer sensitive kid. And they like take them from the parents very yeah. young. Yeah. Uh, huge for huge for the union and their academy. Yeah. This is the kind of stuff that helps like, other kids in the area that maybe would have skipped MLS to say, Ooh, yeah, maybe we, maybe we do go through the MLS next pro and maybe we do, you know, I think it shows the parents and the kids like, 
if you want to get to city, you want to get overseas, maybe this is a way here. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you kind of saw that with like Brendan and, and Paxton where they were like able to sign some of those, like, I'm sure those helped for sure. When Brendan was like the first one that we really got produced and sold and being able to, uh, get other young players due to that. Now it's like, okay, but he didn't go to a huge club, like, you know, like this. So that helps too. When you're selling to high end clubs, uh, it definitely helps like their reputation in the area, getting some of those younger, younger kids. Um, I guess we can stay with Philly and just kind of start our breakdown of the week. I was in the stadium for this one. It did rain, but not enough to put this game off. Uh, Philly beat Minnesota 2-0 with a goal from Daniel Gazdag and from Carranza. Uh, now, unfortunately, Andre Blake had to leave due to an injury. It looked like his head injury. Um uh, we had uh, Olivia uh, Oliver Semla uh, Semla coming in, and uh, you know he just played and did a very good job against Timbers the other uh, the the previous week. So Blake was just coming back from international duty, has the injury. Uh, got injured in like the first half. I don't know if they just didn't realize he had a concussion at that point or something, and then he just kind of comes out of the box later and like falls down and you know points at his head and and uh they had to take him out but it was a battle of two undefeated teams and uh it did not continue undefeated there was no draw we got the victory the philadelphia union and it was a pretty good win at home for the team is a pretty packed game too a nice afternoon game i think it's the only afternoon game at subaru park this year so uh, just overall, really good vibes. I was sending you a video. They were like tons of people in the plaza pregame. It was it was nuts. Yeah, they played a really good team uh, in Minnesota United. Um, I thought the Union played pretty well and and controlled what seemed like most of the game. I think for, I can only remember like two chances, and they were early in the first half uh, with Pookie and and Pookie made some dangerous runs, but it wasn't like it there was, was more than two for anything. sure. But it was because it, it felt. It felt pretty, like, first half before the goal. I felt like Minnesota was getting a lot more dangerous chances because of Pookie's runs, because of the balls that they were putting into him. He had some shots. But they were all, like, not... F they were, like, a lot of half chances for them where they weren't, like, the best... Like, XG-wise, Philly had higher XG at that point in the match than Minnesota because they weren't getting as many quality shots. But I would just say, like, my, like, holding my breath every time Pookie's making that same run he does between the two center backs, and you're like, oh, here comes the ball. And it just either would be too far in front of him, uh, over hit, under hit, or then it gets to him and he's not in a good position to actually take the shot. So a little nerve racking at that point but the second half for sure they didn't have any many good chances until the halong wayne goal that was called back due to offside which was the right call uh, other than that they were they didn't really compete that much in the second half the minnesota yeah and it hurts that like uh, they're a team i think that'll struggle some when renoso is obviously not playing um uh, just because i think there's times where it kind of you know, besides Robin Blood in that midfield, in that attacking midfield area, uh, I think they've got great guys up front, but when they're lacking in the midfield, that it becomes apparent because they're just not setting up their attacking players uh, in front of goal. And I think Pookie, you saw that some. It was just it seemed like it was a little bit out of sync. Like you said, Jordan, it seemed more half chances than it, but it did seem like Minnesota had the chances, whereas, whereas Philadelphia didn't quite have the chances at first. But then the, the second half definitely felt like a, a – once the first goal scored, it, it felt pretty much union on. Um, didn't feel like Minnesota – you know, they're cardiac Minnesota loons, but um, <laughs> they didn't they didn't really throw any big surprises at, at the union late like they normally Yeah, when do. that goal went in from Halong Wayne that gets called off. Yeah. 
I literally like as the ball's getting played to them, it was like coming off an, a, an attack from the union that got cut out real quick. And then they like quickly countered and I'm like, Oh great. Here it is. Like how long Wayne's in this happens all the time. It's like 75th, 80th minute. I'm like, here we go. And uh, luckily for the union offside uh, in the build up to getting it to how long Wayne. Also, I just want to say, like, so I was in the press box for this game. That there's a huge pillar in the middle uh, where I was sitting, right? So, like, I'm sitting to the right of the pillar, which is in the second row. I'm in the third row. For the first 20 minutes of this game, most of the action is taking place behind this pillar, by the way. Like, I didn't know how to describe this. I was going to put out a tweet about it, but it's like, the ball seemingly, and where this pillar is in my eye line is around midfield like at the center circle a little bit into the in, into the half of the union attacking and a little bit into the half of the Minnesota attacking so if that ball was like in that middle center center circle or like right around that very hard to see and then especially the tvs are on a 40 second delay from apple tv so i'm we're watching apple tv in the room i have it on my laptop and i also have it on the tv that they have for us 40 second delay so uh which doesn't sound like a lot but in the actual game uh a lot can happen in 40 seconds where like the ball's already gone back and forth like three times, and then you're just now starting to see the the thing you wanted to see on the TV. I'm like, it felt like it was three minutes behind just because of how fast the game was moving at times. Um, so that was a little like, I was like, man, hopefully they start getting some of these uh, like out of the midfield. And they did. Eventually then it started getting more end-to-end, like Union would get chances, Minnesota would get chances. I'd be able to actually see like what was going on. But just it was just my luck uh, at that point yeah no i think you you made a good point because it the on tv it was they were playing in that that spot for quite some time it seemed like minnesota would be that spot i'm like i was like gosh jordan would (laughs) jordan's not gonna be able to get in the box i'm just like I was gonna say because it was uh, a majority of the game. I think was spent in that that quadrant of the field. <laughs> Definitely the first half. A lot of yeah, the first half. So, um, um, also, I just want to say this is this is why it wasn't really. I think you can go back and listen to it in like the first few games of the season. As a Union fan, not really worried about the draws. I know some fans were, especially that we were giving up more goals than we usually do. But. At the time, we're going through CCC as well. So you're like, all right, just hold on. Just get results. And now, you know, the Union sit uh, seventh in the East. They're only three points off of Cincinnati and first for both the Supporter Shield and for um, the, the lead of the East. So real quick turnaround from going – you know, zero zero three. You know, zero wins, zero losses, three draws, three points. To now uh, tripling your points, you have nine points because you win two games in a row. That gets you six points. That's uh, really great. Yeah, no, they've they've recovered really well, and they're a team that with, they're a team with veteran depth, and that's going to help tremendously. I mean, when you got veteran players up and down to your eleven, uh, and they're healthy, then uh, and they've eliminated some of these competitions that they're in, obviously. They're going. They're going to have better success than some of these other teams. And this team—that's the other thing people have just, I think, ignore. But this team's been together for years now. It's not like they're adding in a ton of new players, which is to the detriment sometimes. I think of the union, but in some cases, it helps tremendously when you always have the same guys. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think that, I think they're fine. Like I think there's a lot of teams that wish they were in the same spot as the union that were also CCC competitors. Um, one in particular that I like. So <laughs> uh, Orlando would love to have nine points. <laughs> <laughs> that they would. Uh, okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, LAFC, I guess, right? LAFC Kai Kamara is now signing with his 11th club. That's a record in MLS. He is Mr. Immaculate Grid. If you're filling out an Immaculate Grid with MLS, 
he, I think the stat was, he, so he's played for 11 different teams now as he goes to LAFC. And we're so close, they said, to him playing for more clubs than existed in MLS when he first started playing in MLS. That's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I forget what the other stat was, but it was like uh, he played for a good number of clubs that did not exist when he first joined MLS as well. Uh, so he, he's been all over. He's joining LAFC as they were rumored to be getting Olivier Giroud. Um, that would not be until the summer. So I assume Kai Kamara is there to help out until then. And, you know, it's just good to have depth for a player that's played in MLS. He has uh, what he's one goal away from tying Landon Donovan's um, second most record in league history. Donovan, I think, has 145. He has 144, which is the third most in league history. And I believe what Wando is still ahead of both of them. But there's a real chance that he can, you know, get up there. Um, 17 years in MLS. He even had, what, at the beginning of last year where he was at another country and and no MLS team had signed him. And now he comes back and he is playing for (laughs) MLS again. That's great. Yeah. No, he's bored. He didn't have anything to do. Yeah, it's, it's and it's strange to me. Like I get maybe a little bit why. Like seventeen years, that's a long time to play in a league. So no wonder you've got a lot of goals as a striker. Like if there were a lot of if there were guys that played seventeen years, they, if you take any striker, they get they they bag some goals and get up there. Um, but it is amazing to me that he's going to be second here soon on the all time goals scored, um, and he's played for that many teams. But like you said, like teams would go out and get him when they needed a striker. Somebody go down and get you know have to go get Kai Kamara. Or, it doesn't seem like he's a bad guy. I think that, that everybody likes him. They generally care for him. So I don't know. Uh, it's yeah. weird. Like it's just funny to me because you don't really see that a whole ton in other sports when you've got. Well, I think now. Perfect. I think now it's before. I feel like it was trades. Yeah. Um, because there wasn't a lot of free agency, so yeah, people need a striker. Okay, let's go out and trade for for Kai Kamara. Nowadays, I think it's just his age that they're like, okay, one year deal. Like this is a 2024 deal with an option for 2025. I'm assuming they won't pick up the option unless if he tears it up. But with his age, they're probably like, okay, we'll sign you for one deal, one year, and that's how he's now getting to so many. Because I would actually be curious to find out. I'm gonna look it up here. How many of them? He was on teams for multiple years at one point, but I want to know like when he's now had the most uh, clubs. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, like when that picked up. <laughs> so let's let's revisit 2006. He's on the Columbus Crew for one season. He then goes to the San Jose Earthquakes for a season. Oops, sorry. Um. Well, the crew is actually 06 and 07, so that's probably two years. I was reading it as, like, baseball. Not baseball, even, because that's one year. Like football, you know, they like go into the next year. Columbus crew, two seasons, but 36 games with the crew. 2008, one year with the Earthquakes. He goes 2008-2009 with the Dynamo. 2009-13 to 13 with SKC. That's, like, his longest stint in an MLS club. He goes to Lone at Norwich goes to Middlesbrough, comes and plays for the Columbus crew in 2015 to 16, goes to the Revs for 16, 17, uh, Vancouver Whitecaps in 2018, 19, 2020, he goes to Colorado Rapids. And then this is where he kind of gets four new clubs here in a span of four years, Minnesota in 2020, Montreal in 2022, Chicago Fire in 2023, LAFC in 2024. And it was 2021, actually, where he was playing with uh, IFK Helsingfors over in Finland that we were like, where is Kai Kamara? And he wasn't, you know, signed. That was 2021. That was actually that long ago. In 2022, he came back and played for Montreal. I felt like that was last year. It's crazy. It's going fast. But, yeah, Mm -hmm. so he kind of picked up a lot of the clubs 
at the beginning and at the end. In the middle, he kind of had a really good run with SKC for a while. Okay. Um, they're also linked to uh, they. They also signed Max, uh, Maxime Cheneau, who comes from, of course, NYCFC, but he had moved over to uh, Liga. Uh, I don't. I don't duh. I don't know what is. I think it's Liga? duh. Yeah. Duh. Yeah, I think it is. Duh. duh. <laughs> the league, duh club uh, AC <laughs> Ajaccio through. 2025 LAFC has him now. So he's coming in. He's 34 years old. He only made 23 appearances for the French team. Uh, but of course, we all know him from when he was at NYCFC from 2016 to 2023. And of course, we talked about the rumor of Olivia, uh, Olivier Giroud, who is, uh, of course, playing with AC Milan and Kristen Pulisic over there as they've built a former Chelsea squad over there. What, what, what do you think of these signings for LAFC? I think most of them are mainly depth, but h- how big would Giroud be as he's kind of approaching the end of his career as well? He's like 37 this year. I mean, LAFC is a good team right now. I think that we were looking around going, you know, they need some veteran pieces that I think were going to be um, instrumental in kind of what they're building as far as having not just some young pieces that are going to be talented for years to come, like a David Martinez. They got Edward Atuesta back. Um, you know, they're building around somebody like Denny Buonga, who's probably going to leave in the summer, but but having here while they've got a shot. Um, a lot of French connection uh, here with Hugo Lloris, and I think that's why Cheneau came and, and Giroud are interested in coming over because they're all native to, to France, and they played together on the French national team. Um, or in different camps together. So I think that's ultimately what, what, what they're building there is just some camaraderie with some of the players. I think it Chanel's a really good piece if you know, a uh, center back piece and depth piece, he could play um, and start some games. Um, he, you know, he'd always been really good with NYCFC, a starter at NYCFC and really instrumental in their uh, MLS cup run. And then, you know, adding in a Giroux is kind of like adding in one of those prolific strikers that's always been really good. And he's always bad goals at Milan. It's not like he's taken major steps back. He's always um, scoring goals there, and he's got quite a bit of assists. I think he leads the team in goals and assists over there. So uh, it'll be interesting to see him implement it just because he's always just gotten goals wherever he goes. And I think MLS will be no different, especially in a Western Conference. So I think this one, I think Giroud's a massive deal um, for at least a couple of years. It's kind of like, reminds me a little bit of like Nani maybe, like when he came over. Over. Um, I know Nani was really good Manchester United and, and playing with uh, where else was Nani was with um, was he in Spain somewhere I uh, Portugal I believe Portugal that's where he was um, but yeah no I, I think Giroud could have that similar impact where he's going to play a year or two um, and be at the highest of levels I think for for MLS and then I could see him kind of taking some steps back but LAFC's got big pockets so I think that's that's ultimately what they've done is spend where they need to spend and build nice pieces in around the, the core group that they've got together now. Yes. Nani was in uh, sporting CP in Portugal. Okay. Sporting Lisbon. Um, as others call him, he's still playing by the way, he's playing in uh, Turkey. Is he really? I knew yeah. he was with Venezia for a while. Yeah, he was there for a year. Then he went to Melbourne Victory over in Australia. Now he's playing for Demispor in Turkey. Interesting. I had no idea he was still playing. He was very confusing over here. Yeah, they could. (laughs) He was good over here. Okay, let's talk about LAFC sticking with them then. And their huge loss against the Rapids. Uh, this was a game that was pretty interesting as I'm monitoring because it, it, it happens while I'm leaving the stadium, right? So the Union game was at 2, LAFC, RSL, I mean, not, not RSL, Rapids were at 4 o'clock. Um, so I'm leaving the game. And if you know anything about the parking situation in Chester for the Union, it takes forever to get out of the lot. So I was actually in the lot still for an additional like 40 minutes after I left the game. And I was checking the score, and I believe that was at that point when I was looking, 
almost halftime and it is 1-1 at that point. Um which was shocking to me because I, I saw like eight minutes in at Tuesta and, and that was while I was like packing up and getting ready to leave. And I'm like, oh, okay, LAFC probably going to steamroll the Rapids, right? We haven't been too impressed with the Rapids at the beginning of the season. Well, um, Mahalovic, which I would say is a lot of people's man of the match day. I'm really curious. D- they haven't announced it yet, have they? I saw the Met team. Uh... Team, what is it? Match day? What are the hell they call the team? Uh, team match day or something like that. I forget what they call them. Uh, team of the match day? Is that what they call that? Yeah. Um, it's where the you know they got each position. But I didn't see, like, I didn't see anybody announce if. No, they they haven't announced there. it yet. It looks like. Um, be, because I'm wondering. Uh, he, he's definitely going to be up there, Mahalovic. And actually, when I was leaving, not when I was leaving, but whenever I got home and saw that they were, that they had won, probably by the time I got home or stopped at the rest area or something, that I saw that and I was like, oh, player of the match day, definitely going to be Mahalovic. He gets a goal, a two goals and an assist, right, to, to seal this victory. And he does it late. And... I'm like, yeah, that's definitely probably going to be my pick. Obviously, there's still a lot of games, but I'm like, all right, early lead here, Mahalovic. I did end up voting for Arango uh, first and then Mahalovic second. But really, Mahalovic put the team on his back, and it shows why the Rapids went out and got him and why I'm happy he's back in this league because – it seemed like he wasn't really vibing overseas. They bring him back. He now just absolutely threw the Western Conference on its head when he almost single-handedly, I want to say, right? Like defeats LAFC, who had a 2-1 lead at a point. And it's like, what, 80-plus minute, 90-plus minute? He goes and gets the victory for them. One of them being like a free kick goal. Uh, should Larice have got it? I don't know. I think some people are not giving Mahalovic enough credit for the actual goal. I think some people are trying to pin it on Larice being on vacation mode, but Larice has actually made some good saves in the past. So I don't think that he's here just taking a paycheck because obviously he's getting paid like league minimum or something, right? Like he wasn't getting paid a, a bunch of money. We, we saw that contract, but yeah, so Mahalovic huge game for them. It prevents LAFC from uh, climbing up to what they would be at second pretty much right now because they would have 10 points. They are now still in ninth place because other teams passed them after that. But they were in, they would have been in really close range of LA Galaxy, and now they are not because Colorado finally got their stuff together, and Colorado now actually sits above LAFC with seventh place, eight points, thanks to that victory, which they would have had only five points. They would have been uh, around 10 or 11th. Uh, No, they would have been 12th if not for that victory. So really great game for Mahalo. What was your thoughts on seeing Colorado maybe finally put the pieces together for their new club? Yeah, they, uh, they did an overhaul in the off season. We talked about it. Uh, they've got the likes of Cole Bassett. They've got Georgie Mihaljevic, Kevin Gabral, Sam Vines, um, you know, Zach Steffen. Like this is a team that added a ton of talent. And it's funny to me because, uh, and I think we, we kind of do it some because we're just like, you know, they're just not gelling together. But it takes a long time for a team to gel together. I, I take, for instance, just because I watch them all the time, Orlando last year started out really poorly. Um we were kind of like, you know, what, you know, make all these signings and nothing comes of it. And then they had one of the best second halves of the season, I think, in the Hall of MLS um, and made a charge towards you know, the Eastern Conference um, and really made a splash finishing second. Well, I think Colorado has that same kind of build. I think that what they're going to lack is uh, a prolific goal scorer because I'm not sure that Re- or Navarro is – the person that you can count on to bang in goals as he should. So adding maybe a, a top talent as far as getting goals is concerned is, is next up in the priority list of the Colorado Rapids. And it seems like they're willing to spend some money 
because I believe they're owned by are they are they the ones owned by Kroenke? Are they? Yeah. Owned, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it seems like Colorado has a good game plan. Find the Americans that didn't quite work out in Europe, bring them back for a second go. And when I say that, I'm it's not like they're bringing back you know Joe Schmo who you know, was a was death piece and somehow ended up over into Europe or, you know, third best player on the roster. These all were guys that were best up on their rosters when they did make the move to Europe, um, like Cole Bassett, like Georgie. So uh, to get this win, uh, a crucial win, I would call it, because of where they sat in the table uh, against an LAFC team that had not been playing too well, but did bounce back a little bit last week and then um, looked like they were going to grab three points on the road against Colorado. Um, a two nil, or sorry, a two one uh, lead heading into like the seventh, uh, the last seven minutes of the game. Um, big thing was David Martinez getting, uh, you know, sent off. Can't do that uh, <laughs> that late in the game. It cost LAFC. It was minutes later that LAFC uh, equalized, and then that's when Mihalovic takes completely. You mean over. Rapids equalize? Yeah. Or sorry, uh, but Rapids yeah. equalize in the eighty third minute. Eighty fifth yeah. minute was the red card. That's what ninetieth yeah. minute was the goal. They played seven minutes of stoppage time, it looks like. Yeah. So but. now these two teams sit one point apart. LAFC, we know, have given up more goals, right? We, we kind of talked about that at the beginning of the season. They were giving up a little bit more goals. Last week, they had the huge win that really boosted their goal differential and their goals for. Now they're back to an even goal differential with nine goals scored, nine goals uh, allowed. So... It definitely need to step it up there. So we'll see if Chano uh, can help them with that. And if Kamara can help them score some goals that they so badly need as, uh, you know, they, they've been struggling on, on that end for a bit. Sporting Kansas City win on the road, 3-1 over Toronto. This was a huge result. This is one I was watching. You know, I got home that night and I had – like MLS 360 on my laptop. I had the Orlando game on the TV. I'm sorry. I I was, (laughs) and I was just kind of, you know, having my wondering eye go all over the place. And uh, that one was a real shock for me. Sporting Kansas city coming out and just absolutely, it was three nil at one point, I believe. So they had a huge, huge game. Uh, and Toronto is continuing to be a team that I'm really perplexed by. They they look really great some weeks, and then they look really poor some weeks. So I'm really curious on how that's going to shake out. Yeah, and um, I don't know if we talked a lot about it uh, or ha- it had a timeline, but it, it, Insigne is going to be out for two months um, is what John Herdman uh, was quoted in saying. I think so. when we last said it was not a, a time frame, yeah. I believe. So. but. Seth, that's that's huge. He had two goals, um, two really good goals. He'd been so crucial in the attack. I mean, he was creating things out of thin air. It looked like he was on a meteoric rise in the league, uh, kind of going to what uh, we thought Toronto would be. Herdman had been playing really well defensively, and then they go in and drop this big one on the road, uh, or sorry, at home uh, against Sporting Kansas City. Um, it would have been better if it was on the road because this result looks a little bit better on a road game, um, not necessarily when you're coming back to BMO and dropping three points um, in a 3-1 thrashing from Sporting Kansas City, Jordan, who hasn't looked great. Um, I would say they've, they've been better uh, lately, but they, they've been a team also kind of up and down going through it this year. Um, so to see them do that, uh, and Toronto had started so well, and it's really a bummer because it, I just don't think they're a team that's going to be able to weather any kind of storm with Insignia gone. So those two months, I think, are going to be real rough for Toronto just because I don't think they've got the talent to necessarily match up against the Eastern Conference um, mm-hmm. with a big player gone for two months. And that, that's always a big issue, that leg, hamstring, muscle issue is yeah. just not, a, not something you want. Uh, Dallas lose to Austin. Austin <laughs> win two one, uh, first win of the season for them. Dallas, look, I- I'm telling you, they they're done. They're done this year. Uh, they are. They they have so many injuries, so many players out. Right, Paul McCall's out now for the season. Looking at their list of people that were out for this game and just. 
that are going to continue to have injury issues this season. I can't see how this Dallas team puts up any actual threat to winning MLS Cup this year. They may not even make the playoffs if everything continues going this south for them. So uh, I, I don't know if that means any sort of changes would happen because it does seem like just really bad luck for them right now. But they only have three points. They're 12th in the West. It's not looking good. I, I think I'm going to call it now. Seven match days in. They're they're done. They're out. Dang. Uh, <laughs> uh, I will say it, it is concerning just because of uh, the number of You lose to Austin? Yeah. Orlando beat Austin. Yeah. What the no, hell? I get it. Yeah. <laughs> you've got Jesus on the on the sideline. You've got Paxton Dunn. Um, you've got Alan Velasco hurt. Uh, it's just not a team that's got any kind of force in the midfield. And then you bring in that new striker, Petar Musa. When he doesn't have any service, Jordan, what the hell is he supposed to do? Paul Ariel out there apologizing to everybody on Twitter is, is kind of just like, Okay, I, I get that you're, I get that you're frustrated, right? And he said that he's gonna. It's never this never ends well, Jordan. Like I can't remember a time somebody goes on Twitter uh, or X or whatever they and, and announces to the fan base we're gonna be better, and then it ends up being better. It always seems like it goes worse from then. Like it seems like a, a nail in the coffin when you send out that messaging because it's it's like no, we'll be better. It's like will you? Because you just lost to. Arguably, Jordan, one of the worst teams that we've had in the league for a long time. Um, How much worse off- can it get, though? I mean, they have six <laughs> goals scored, ten goals against. Can't get worse. I mean, it's... I mean, they could, I guess, end up looking like San Jose, negative six goal differential. But it's not. I mean, I guess the good thing for Dallas and for Seattle is that they've only played five games compared to San Jose playing six. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't think it could get much worse for them. They have to rebound at some point, but I just, yeah, mathematically they're not eliminated, but if they're going to have some of these uh, players out for any length of time, it, it's not looking good for them this year. Yeah. I, I, I wish there was a way to break down this. I'm sure there's advanced stats and you'd have to dig into them, but I'm pretty sure that teams that start with three points in five games, um, that's usually a death sentence. <laughs> like I don't, I, I, and, and I mean, we can talk about Seattle later, but uh, there's there's some teams, Jordan, man, that it, it's shocking with how bad they are. Um, Orlando. Most of them in the West. Too. Yeah. Uh, most of them are in the West this year. Okay. So we have. Uh, how about RSL St. Louis here? Uh, RSL win 3 1 against. St. Louis, um, this game was another surprise again, I guess. Like, I expected RSL to win, is what I would say, right? But three minutes in, St. Louis scored. I'm like, oh, all right, here we go. It's going to take until the 70th minute for RSL to equalize. Then Arango's going to score again in the 84th, and then he's going to score again in the 90 plus one. He single-handedly... Uh, wins this game with a hat trick. This is why I voted him as player of the match day. You go score a hat trick. I feel like that's that's my kind of thing. If you score a hat trick, I have to give you player of the match day, unless if they're all like tap-ins. But if you're like actually making your team, putting them on their your back and getting those three points for your team, especially from behind, and that's what we saw both with Mahalovic and with um, Arango, is that they took their club that was behind in the match, put them on their back, win the game. That's worthy of it. So I, I voted Arango. Huge victory for uh, RSL as they now sit third place, 10 points. They're only two points off of LA Galaxy, who everybody is talking about as the second coming, uh, which is, of course, related to this weekend as it was Easter weekend. But, uh, Logan, your thoughts on RSL and Arango and maybe what this means also for St. Louis, who have been not as good as last year. I think we can all say that. But they're still they're, – I think they're still doing better than I would have thought. Yes, they sit 10th, but they have seven points. They're three points off a second because of how the gap is right now. But um, they, they are coming back to earth a little bit. 
yeah to start off it's kind of the opposite in the other direction of like you start out with five wins to start the your inaugural season last year that's 15 points and there's not any time in the season when a lot of teams run off 15 straight um so that that really does help um I, I would say on the, you know, on the RSL side of it, Chicho's uh, going to Chicho. Um, he uh, was controversial uh, in the fact that um, there's a, I think it's his first goal um, where he's smacking away um, a hand of uh, the defender. And um, it kind of looked like it, like you can't see it very clearly because Berkey's head gets in the way from the camera angle, but people are like, well, he punched him. How is that not a red card? Actually looks like Chicho, like, you know, when you try to swat somebody's hand down to try to get it off of you as a, um, as a player. Um, I think it just looked like he'd gone into his stomach with a fist, but it looked like he was just trying to move. Cause I, I don't know. Like I've never seen Chicho really, he's not really a dirty player. I don't think, I think he's just, you know, he's very physical. Um, and he's, a, he's one of the best players in this league. I don't think it was intentional at all. Cause it didn't look like he had any kind of intent, but cause he like, he does it when, and he also tries to get away from him. It, you know, if somebody's going to do that, they usually will step into it. Um, he was just trying to get him off him. So uh, the controversy aside, man, this RSL team, if Chicho's going, RSL's going, um, they look really special. Diego Luna mashing up with Chicho's just a phenomenon to see. And um, yeah, so I, it, it's big for RSL. I think it's tough for St. Louis. St. Louis is still a decent team. I think they're a playoff team. I just don't know quite where they sit. I think there are times where they, they lack some creativity in the midfield if Lovin's not playing and he's not, you know, providing that service in um, to some of the wingers and some of the attacking players. Um, and they just don't seem to have, they don't seem to have consistency. And that's where I think it's going to be tough to win uh, in this league. But again, it's the Western Conference. Anything can happen. Sounders lose, Galaxy win, 1-0. This po- pitch was soaked, by the way. Oh, it was uh, bad. It was, Seattle was probably like, what the hell? Like, like, we, <laughs> this is, we're in Philadelphia again. Yeah, because it was um, – it wasn't as bad as Phillies that day, but it was – I was like, wow, they're playing on this? Because it was really like – you just see the water spraying with every time the ball is moving across it. Uh, Gabriel Peck scores. Uh, his first MLS goal. Um, and it's also the team's first clean sheet of the season, which is something Galaxy had kind of been missing this year so far. They've been kind of in a lot of uh, even matches, a lot of um, goals being scored, though, for, for the LA Galaxy games. But this time, just the one goal, put it away. Paint Cell assisted it. There you go. A pretty good result for LA Galaxy, who keep being top of the West, making Logan eat his words from the preseason. Uh, Vancouver, hang on for a 3-2 victory over the Timbers. Vancouver actually has been playing pretty well in the Cascadia games in the past few years. They go ahead and win this one 3-2 at home. Timbers, though, is kind of the one I want to talk about. We'll talk about Vancouver. Timbers started off this season hot. They have not been playing hot as of recently. Are you worried about... I know we asked this last week, too, but did you see any signs of life in this game that make you think, oh, they'll be back? Um, I'm going to go with no. <laughs> I'm going to go with no. Uh, I just... I don't know. I, there, there's something about a Phil Neville team, and I'll continue to say until he proves me wrong. I, I think there's just something about a Phil Neville team that they're notorious for losing and and starting well, or, or, or you know, jumping out to a good start, or, or rattling off four or five wins straight, and then going into just this spiral of a team. And I, one, they're not they're not deep enough to handle injuries. So when injuries do come, um, when time off is going to happen, when international breaks are going to happen, um, when some of these teams are healthier that are beating up on them, I, they just don't, I don't think they have what it takes to be a top level team in the Western conference. And we talked about this and, you know, you, you add in different pieces and they've added some nice pieces, but I, I just don't see where this Portland team is going to be able to get out of its way. Um, with Rodriguez in as the number nine, you would think maybe this will be the answer. Uh, but if he's not providing goals, then it's essentially just the same. He's just eating up space. Um, Evander really is. I mean, he, he's, he and Anthony, I feel like 
they're, they're going to have to carry the team. I'm not, I'm not sure Diego Chara is going to do that for you. Um, Santiago Moreno, I got, you know, there, there's different things that he does that are, that are good, but I'm not sure that he's that next level player. So you, you really do, you start to wonder where is this team going to start to break out of it? And, um, since the beginning of the, the season, Jordan, they've just, they've regressed and, that's something you don't really want to see because Phil Neville is not one that's going to make many adjustments. I don't think so. We'll see. Um, we'll see what happens. But right now I just, they, they ran up against a, a Vancouver team. That's really good. Yeah. Vancouver's been outstanding to start the season. Just absolutely wonderful to watch as well. They are only two points off of first place. Uh, they do have a loss while LA galaxy is undefeated. We actually only have three undefeated teams right now, which is Cincinnati, Philadelphia, and LA Galaxy. Um, Yeah, just really exciting. And you know what? Actually, Vancouver has a game in hand because they didn't start the season playing. So they can actually take over first place uh, from the Galaxy. That's how good Vancouver has been to start the season. Golden Boot Race, Lewis Morgan still has the lead here. Six goals. Arango has shot up now to second place. He's got five goals. Yakamakis with five. Uh, Jovalich with five. Suarez with five. And Benteke with four. Um, so that's that right now. We had Cincinnati and Charlotte draw 1-1. One, one. Um, DC beat Montreal 1-0. Miami and NYCFC drew 1-1. One, one. Uh, Messi still injured. Day to day listed there. Um, Suarez did score. Did he score? I'm pretty sure I remember him scoring. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah, a nice score. header. Yeah. Nice header. How about this guy, a right back, uh, <laughs> who is signed on loan, who made his debut for the team? This guy is like my long lost cousin. This is Wiegand. Uh, probably pronounce Wiegand the same way, or, you know, the German way of uh, Wiegand, Wiegand, because um, it's W-E-I-G-A-N-D-T, which is the old German spelling of it. Uh, so pretty cool. I, I kept saying, like, I need to get this guy's jersey because it just would be looking like my last name, but it's, you know, I think it'd be cool. Uh, but yeah, he made his debut and played uh, for the game as well. That game finished 1-1. Matt Freeze played outstandingly in goal. Orlando, you were at this game. 1-1. Lewis Morgan scored the penalty in the 21st minute, and then it took a own goal in the 89th minute for Orlando to equalize. What's the vibe like at the stadium currently with how this team has been uh, playing? Yeah, frustration. I would say. I mean, I, I would. Uh, I, what's weird, Jordan, to say that, but the stadium was the most crowded I've ever seen it. Um, I don't know if it's because it was kids' night, if it was Easter weekend, what it was a combination of. Like, it was nice weather. I don't know, like it's mm, spring. Maybe it was a nice mix. Like it was, it was packed. Um, it was the loudest I'd heard it. Um, but I think it's just this. I think it's this fan base just eager for something to happen, and it's just not happening. Facundo Torres has been awful. He can't find any kind of footing there. There's nothing that he's adding that's providing any kind of service. They've got to find a right back. Duger Don is not the answer. It's it's kind of a Matt and I have a, this ongoing joke that anytime he touches the ball, we just look at each other and go, oh, this isn't going to be good. Um, just forces things in and, and is trying to force things because nobody else is creating much. Nico Ladero is playing pretty well, but I mean, that's really been it as far as the midfield. Um, Duncan's, you know, he's been in and out with international camps going on. He's not quite found his. Um, you know, their runs because Muriel's occupying some of the similar spots and Muriel's playing more of a 10 and people are upset about that because he's like, well, he's a striker and he's clearly not uh, a striker. I don't think in this league, I think he's much more of a 10 or second striker, um, at least what he's proven so far. So it's just been, it's been a mess. And then the defense has been okay. It's not been brilliant, but um, I think sometimes it saves us a little bit having the defense that we have, but it's just a mess. And I I think Oscar's out of ideas. Um, And I think that's, that's the issue people are having is that we do seem to have a very talented roster. He's just lost complete control of what's going on and, and what's the best way to play because the roster and the lineup's always different. So. Yeah. It's fascinating seeing how they've been uh, this season 
honestly. Um, at least you guys got to see a goal, I guess, right? Uh, yeah. A good draw in the sense of it looked like v- this was not going to be getting oh, yeah, any no, points, we, and, yeah. and they they do they do get the point at least. Houston beat San Jose uh, two one. Nashville and Columbus drew two two. A goal of the year so far, I would say, in uh, Annabelle Godoy with his bicycle kick. I've seen some people say it's not that impressive. Uh, like, Cause I put out that tweet, like goal of the year. And people are like, nah, uh, somebody said Chicago's windy city goal. I'm sorry. I can't give it to one that the wind gives like the biggest assist, you know, like that was a cost is not shot. shooting. Yeah. It. He's, he's passing. <laughs> it. I can't give that shot. goal of yeah. the goal of the season. It was fun. Yeah. It was fun and absurd, but I can't give it goal of the uh goal of the year so far um and then you know i just also seen i saw some people say and i agree more with this that the quality of the opponent is what makes it uh so good too you know this is a you know nashville scoring against columbus columbus being one of the best teams in the league champions last year all that like it's really great to see Nashville's playing with like half their roster up in right. the stands. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean it, it worked out like for me that's a uh, that's a pretty big goal and anytime it's a bicycle kick I have to give it to that right now, you know. Especially like Godoy. Nobody was thinking Godoy is going to do a bicycle kick, all right? So that that gives me some bonus points on that. Uh talk about bonus points. Atlanta beat Chicago 3-0. Chicago just absolutely fall apart in this game. Atlanta pretty much got bonus points because they were playing against Chicago that game. So <laughs> back on my Chicago hater train. Okay. I'm sure that's what some people will say. That's all of the results from the weekend. Uh, coming up. This week, we have CONCACAF Champions Cup. Columbus face Tigres at 7 o'clock on FS1. I will say, though, I saw somebody share the weather forecast. It's going to be really bad in Columbus tomorrow. Rain, wind, tornado chances. I wouldn't be shocked if this game does not happen. Then we actually have, uh, also at the CONCACAF Champions Cup, New England hosting Club America 9 o'clock on FS1. Then U.S. Open Cup, Richmond Kickers hosting Maryland Bobcats, Charlotte Independence hosting the South Carolina United Heat, NYCFC 2 hosting New York Red Bulls 2 uh, in a Hudson River 2 derby uh, coming up here. M- uh, Minnesota United FC 2 versus Michigan Stars at 8.30 in the Open Cup. Wednesday, we have Open Cup matches as well. Miami United, Club de Leon. Uh, Knoxville, Greenville hosting an Avil matchup right there. Knoxville and Greenville playing at seven o'clock. South Georgia playing against Savannah Clovers at seven. Vermont Green FC and Carolina playing at seven o'clock. Apotheos FC versus Chattanooga at seven thirty. Uh, Chicago Fire two hosting Madison. Let's go Madison, forward Madison. Miami, Monterey at 8 o'clock. Um, they have that as... Oh, okay, that's CONCACAF Champions Cup. I was like, what? Miami's not in the Open Cup. Sorry. Uh, they have these games interspersed here. Omaha versus... Uh, Union Omaha versus Des Moines. Colorado Rapids 2 versus Northern Colorado. Spokane Velocity versus LA Force. And Ventura County versus Irvin Zeta FC. So one Champions Cup game on Wednesday at 8 o'clock. That's Miami and Monterey. The rest are all Open Cup matches. And they've been playing on Thursday for some Open Cup, but not this round. So we're good there. Before we move on to the weekend results, Champions Cup. Feeling good? Like how many clubs should we expect to see move on for MLS? Yeah, you and I had this discussion over text. I've got one, you got one, I think, but we're different teams. 
Um, I do. I said I, actually a max of one. I'm actually okay. going to go that we don't get any. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I do have major concerns though. Now that I think of it, um, uh, Chucho is not with the team. Uh, Wolf announced he said team policy. Don't know what that means. That's all he said uh, when they asked what's going on. And uh, Chucho's not, or Chucho's not with them because he's, um, yeah, I don't know. Just, gee, obviously broken some kind of policy. Um, don't know what it is, but it's broken. Um, and then Messi, I mean, it sounds like he's going to try to give it a go, but, you know, Tata has been very, oh, it's day to day, which I think that's what you're going to get with Messi just because. And I'm so sorry for anybody that's bought tickets. I, I refuse to buy tickets to go see Miami this year just because I, I just don't know how much he actually plays in MLS um, until later in the year. But, yeah, I I don't have any confidence. The only team I did have confidence in, I actually thought Columbus could beat Tigres because of the way Tigres has looked. Um, but I, even that, I'm starting to doubt. So, Jordan, I'm going to go with you. I'm going to say there's zero that come out of this round. Yeah, I have to go with a zero. I think if there was going to be one, I was going to go with Miami. Just had a vibe of like Miami could win this game with or without Messi. I'm worried about the crew with how they've been informed lately. Tigres is just a club that plays in this competition very well all the time. Uh, just I feel like they're always, always close to reaching the final, so I can't bet against Tigres. So, uh, New England against Club America, please. New England is not playing well in the league right now. I have to go with Club America just fully on that. Unfortunately, it looks like a fairly weak season for the CONCACAF Champions Cup uh, MLS participation. guess it is what it is. All right, Saturday, April 6th, Cincinnati host New York Red Bull at 7.30. Uh, I think I already said that. My bad. Columbus, D.C. is also at 7.30. LAFC and LA Galaxy playing a 7.30 game. That's pretty nice. And it's also free on Apple TV, and it's also on Big Fox if you want to watch that. Miami and Colorado, New England and Charlotte, NYCFC Atlanta, Vancouver, Toronto. Those are all 7.30 kickoffs. 8.30 8.30 is Austin, San Jose, Chicago, Houston, Minnesota, RSL, Nashville, Philadelphia, and St. Louis, Dallas. All of those 8.30. And only one 10.30 match this Saturday, which is Seattle and Montreal. Then on Sunday, we have Kansas City and Portland at 1.30. That's also free on Apple TV, and it is also on Fox. I guess, Logan, give me your uh, pick of the week here for what what should be a fun match? And if you say El Trafico, pick something else. <laughs> I was going to pick something else. Um, uh, there's a lot of good games this week. Uh, I think that the game to watch this week is going to be Cincinnati and New York. I love that matchup. It is a TQL. It will be ruckus. Um, Cincinnati no longer in CCC, um, getting healthy, uh, getting back uh, to full fitness and form and everything else. Um, So I'm excited to see what Cincinnati does against New York. I think the Red Bull kind of a disappointment here in Orlando, because I think they could have grabbed three or should have grabbed three um, with how Orlando has been playing. So going to Cincinnati, I think it's a crucial, crucial one point must um, for the Red Bull. And it's a good stack up uh, game against uh, a team Jordan that we think might win the Eastern conference. So, um, I don't know. It's a good test for New York on the road for the first time. I think New York has finally figured out Jordan, how to, uh, how to navigate this league. Um, and they've been really exciting this year. All right. I'll go with El Trafico. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Cause 'cause I made it sound like that was one was off limits for you. Um, I just, the reason I said no El Trafico for, for people that are listening is just, that's the give me right. So obviously you're all going to check that out. Probably at seven 30, it's free. It's on, Apple TV, if you don't have season pass, you can just watch it for free. You can watch it on Fox. It's going to be a good matchup, but I think I'm going to have to go with, for my out-of-the-box pick, I'm going to go Minnesota RSL. I still think Minnesota can be a good team. RSL's been a great team to start here. I would love to see those two battle it out. That's at 830 Eastern, Minnesota United hosting RSL. 
I think that one sounds like a lot of fun. It's a good match. And that is the games that are coming up. Uh, real quick, Eastern Conference, Cincinnati lead it with 12 points. Miami's in second with 11. Columbus with 11. New York with 11. Toronto in fifth with 10. Atlanta, Philly, D.C. all have nine points. Charlotte in ninth with eight. Montreal and Nashville both have seven. Chicago and Orlando both have five. And New York City FC in 14th with four. And New England in 15th with one. All of the news, except for the Red Bulls, are at the bottom. Western Conference, LA Galaxy lead it with 12 points. Vancouver have 10. RSL have 10. Minnesota have 10. Houston have 10. SKC have uh, nine points there in sixth place. Colorado have eight points. Portland, LAFC, and St. Louis all have seven. Austin's in 11th with six. Dallas and San Jose both have three. And at the bottom of the West, in 14th place with two points, is Seattle Sounders. Brutal. Brutal season. Brutal start for Seattle. All right. Well, that about wraps us up here. Anything else you wanted to shout out before we head out? Anything I didn't talk about? Mm, no, I don't think so. I think we've got it all squared away. Oh, over the weekend, uh, Haji Wright, uh, Josh Sargent, and mm. I forget who else. Dang it. I blank. Um, they scored. scored. Yeah. So good stuff from the U.S. Men's National Team once again. And I watched Haji play a little bit today, too. And he's looked really good, man. Like, he looks <laughs> – that's really exciting stuff. So I'm, I'm excited for Murray. Everybody US was game. shocked he was getting called in. And yeah. No, I would not be shocked. He is a really good baseball player. He'll be on the baseball. Copa team. <laughs> I think he'll be on the Copa team. I think so, too. He looks really good. I think Sargent will be as well. I think you might – Yeah, healthy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you might lose. Oh, Balogun scored. That's who else. Oh, okay. They're all scoring, man. Good. That's what we need. There, there's a long period where we were following last year where none of them were scoring. So please continue true. scoring. <laughs> <laughs> please continue scoring. You can follow us at Stateside Show on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, threads, all that good stuff. You can email us at statesideshow at gmail.com if you want to send us long form feedback. You can rate and review us on Apple Podcast and Spotify. You can also like and subscribe to us here on the YouTube channel where we have 150 plus who have subscribed and we just got another one the other day. And I want to thank everyone who has gone and hit that subscribe button. It uh, makes us feel really good. So thank you for being a part of our, uh, our week as we share our thoughts on the major league soccer week, every single week. Thanks for being our friend. Yeah. We like to call you all friends. So make sure you let us know who you are. You can even contact us. Just tell us your thoughts. Tell us how wrong we were about goal of the goal of the year so far. If you don't have the Godoy goal as goal of the year. And if you don't, what do you have? Because I really want to know what people have as a goal above that. But thank you all for watching and listening. We will catch you next time when we talk match day eight.